First, I read The Black Cloud from 1957. Then, 1963, The Fifth Planet. And now, from 1967, a collection of Fred Hoyle's short stories, Element 79. Element 79 is gold. But is this collection gold? Let's first take a look at the author. Sir Fred Hoyle was born June 24, 1915 and passed away on August 20, 2001. He was an English astronomer who formulated the theory of stellar nucleosynthesis. He also held controversial stances on other scientific matters, in particular his rejection of the Big Bang Theory, a term coined by him on BBC Radio, in favor of the steady state model and its promotion of panspermia as the origin of life on Earth. Panspermia is the hypothesis that life exists throughout the universe, distributed by space dust, meteoroids, asteroids, comets, and planetoids, as well as by spacecraft carrying unintended contamination by microorganisms, known as directed panspermia. The theory argues that life did not originate on Earth, but instead evolved somewhere else and seeded life as we know it. Sir Fred Hoyle was not only a renowned astronomer, he was also a very good science fiction writer. You can find a review for his debut novel, The Black Cloud, or for The Fifth Planet on my channel. But today, let's talk about the stories of Element 79. This is a collection of 15 stories in under 150 pages. The longest is about 20 pages long, and the shortest is only two pages. These stories touched on themes you may see in a lot of science fiction stories from the 50s and 60s. For example, the first story, The Zoo Men. This is a tale of alien abduction. Humans supposedly being abducted to be part of an alien zoo. But is that the case? A far future expedition of humans discovers descendants on another planet. Pym makes his point. Pym is a retired physics professor. He is looking for significance in his life and makes a deal with the devil. The magnetosphere. What if an expedition finds that the magnetic sphere around the planet is actually alive? Can they communicate with it? Not all the stories would be science fiction. There's some fantasy and even slice of life stories here. A Plays the Thing explores the playwright's writing of a play with a man and two women. And there's cattle trucks. The Greek god Dionysus awakens after thousands of years of sleep to be a witness to what 1960s California is all about. He experiences freeway driving and a crowded plane trip. Of course, there's some unusual consequences for having a god on your flight. Welcome to Slippage City is also another tale of a deal with the devil. This seems to be a theme that Fred Hoyle liked to visit. The axe is a simple tale, a mountaineer tale. An axe is a special possession as it has a nostalgic story behind it. Agent 38 combines espionage and planetary exploration. What will we find on the surface of Venus? This was a clever story, one of my favorites. The Martians was a story about NASA and how it possibly could start setting up a moon base on the moon and eventually reach out to Mars. At first, it seemed to be a blueprint for further exploration, but then we discover there are Martians, but these Martians aren't biological. An interesting story. Short-sighted reminded me of some of the adult stories of Roald Dahl. It's a bird watcher story with a twist ending. A Jury of Five is a curious take on the afterlife. Think quantum physics and ghosts. Who is really dead in a car crash? This was another story I really enjoyed. Blackmail was a weird little story about someone teaching a group of animals to watch TV. But this is an unusual group of animals. Element 79 is the namesake for this collection. It is a story of an asteroid that develops into basically only Element 79. And that asteroid comes to Earth near Scotland. What would happen if the UK has more gold than the rest of the world. Would the price of gold plummet or would the UK use Element 79 judiciously? And if a country became so rich that nobody had to work, what would happen to the people of that country? This too was a good story. The Judgment of Aphrodite 
is another story of gods in our modern time. It's a story of Hermes and Aphrodite judging humans to see who would be dominant in the world. And the final story is the operation. What if a society in trying to promote harmony has an operation, but this operation conditions the population to be not interested in sex? Is this population control or is this the end of humanity? I found a number of the stories in this 15-story collection to be surprising. I had read two science fiction novels by Fred Hoyle that were obviously written by an astronomer. These stories only featured a bit of astronomy. Most of them seemed to explore themes that were prevalent in the 1960s literature. I really didn't think I was going to find stories about gods and devils. So out of the 15 stories, I found about five that were standouts for me. And then the rest were okay. I did like that they were very short stories. I give Element 79 6.5 out of 10. There will be some more Fred Hoyle on this channel in the future. I have the Andromeda Anthology by Fred Hoyle and John Elliott. This is two novels. I also have Rockets in Ursa Major. That one's by Fred Hoyle with his son Jeffrey Hoyle. October the 1st is Too Late. Into Deepest Space, once again with his son. And The Incandescent Ones, once again with his son. So lots to read. Do you have any recommendation of which one I should read next? Until next time, keep watching the skies and keep reading.